Good evening, good evening, and God bless you. Welcome to this, another opportunity for a moment in the Word. And as I stated on Sunday morning, we will uh, take somewhat of a break over the summer, and we will most certainly stay within contact with you so that uh, you may uh, know our movement relative to a moment in the Word and all of the virtual connections that we will uh, continue to share uh, through this platform and perhaps some others. Uh, I want to say to you that I am appreciative. Uh, we've been in this pandemic for quite a while now, and it appears that we are uh, some kind of way coming out of it. And I am thankful to God uh, that he has heard our prayer. And we are still yet praying and will give you detail relative to our movement in ministry uh, prior to executing something going uh, public. We will talk with the Enon Church first, uh, most certainly because that's where our responsibility lies. Uh, I want to say to uh, each and every one of you that uh, for your encouragement and for your strength and allowing me to stand on your shoulders during this time, it has really, really been a blessing to me. And I want to also say that uh, the gifts you shared during this pandemic for the last two years, actually, uh, last year and this year uh, for anniversary and for giving to me as a pastor sowing into my life uh, love offerings uh, during this time, I am appreciative. And I'm most certainly most thankful for how you have uh, kept and vanguarded the ministry through your tithe and offering and giving. And so um, let me say thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, if you uh, visiting with us and sharing with us for the first time through this virtual connection. I appreciate your doing that, and we are thankful for that as well. Let me also say that uh, if you are an unsaved person, you know, really the thrust and the movement and the premise by which we share uh, is always number one paramount to ensure that we are making a connection to those persons who are saved. Uh, uh, who are lost and need saving. Uh, so we extend that to you. If you like to know the plan of salvation for your life, if you are in need of some kind of assistance, or if you're in need of prayer, uh, you can text Enon Prayer, Enon Salvation, or Enon Support. Or if you made that decision where you'd like to become a part of the world's greatest church as we seek to do what it is God has allowed and called us to do, in these last and evil days where we endeavor to live Christ, seek the salvation of the unsaved, foster unity of faith, and promote a more excellent way of living. Um, and you have made that decision. You can text the keyword join Enon. In any of those components, you can text uh, to 54244. Also, there are three ways that you can give to this ministry. You can give by um, going online to our online um, website and sharing in the online giving portion by using your credit card. Or you can really set us up for bill pay, however you wish to do. As well, you can uh, text it to us, Enon MG, Enon Mobile Giving, to the number 54244. And you can mail it as well, 3550 Enon Road, Atlanta, Georgia, 30349. And so let's uh, move uh, forward. And today I want to kind of give you, as I seek to give you a little medicine for your mind and a little strategy for your soul, to give you somewhat of a word that will challenge you uh, to really uh, ask yourself some questions. And most certainly I pray that you would answer the question that you're going to ask yourself. And let's go to uh, Matthew chapter number six, the infamous uh, portion of chapter six in verse number 19, all the way to verse 24. And I'm reading the New International Version of Hebrew context of the Bible. It may differ from the one you hold, but in conglomeration, it will take us to the same benedictional point and doxological moment. But watch this, what it says in verse 19, it says, do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But look at verse 20, 
Store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and vermin doth not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, verse number 21, there your heart will be also. Verse 22, the eyes is a lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. Look at verse 23. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. Powerful word. If then the light within you is darkness. Watch this. How great is that darkness? Look at verse 24, the finality of our reading. And look at what it says. So no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one, you'll hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God, oh, my Lord, and money. I want to talk today and give by posing a question to you. Who owns you? Who is it that owns you? Who is it that owns you? Who owns you? Who owns you? And so we can divide really life, ladies and gentlemen, into two broad categories, uh, the spiritual and the material. That's what we can do. We can divide the two, both spiritual and material. But the Lord Jesus never made the distinction. Matter of fact, he often taught that, uh, at, that, an at, that our attitude toward material things is a mark of your true spirituality. Because in verse number 21, where your treasure is, talk is cheap. But where your money is, you put your money where your mouth is. You heard the saying, put your money where your mouth is. Some guys attach their wallet to a belt, uh, you know, belt loop with a chain. You ever seen that where there's a belt loop in this long chain so that the wallet, uh, no matter what happens, is still connected to them. God connects our wallet to our hearts. I want you to get that. He connects our hearts and our wallets to our heart because it says where the treasure is, there will your heart be. In other words, Jesus can look at our checkbook for the last 30 days and see where we are spiritually. He can look at that not only by uh, what we return to him, by what we do also with the remaining 90%. I want to give you this. And so and, uh, uh, the rest of his money, uh, the, the things we place such importance upon it really dictates where our hearts are. And so now nowhere did uh, our Lord magnify poverty. He did not ever say that we ought to be poor, uh, poor in spirit, poor in heart, but never poor in monetary being. And so when we start talking about poor in heart, poor in spirit, that means contrite. That means that you have a, 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 a sad feeling about something that you did. But now here's the point. He never magnifies poverty. Matter of fact, Jesus was rich. And I declare that because even while he was dying on the cross, they were gambling for his purple garments. But listen to this. There's nothing spiritual about being poor. Nothing spiritual about being poor. That's not the design nor the plan through this textual assignment that God wishes for us to have. There's nothing wrong with things in and of themselves. First Timothy, look at first Timothy chapter number six, verse 17. The living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. So the important question is, do I own my possessions or do they own me? Tough question for you tonight. I want to leave you with some medicine for your mind and a strategy for your soul. Now, when we go to verse 32 of chapter 6, uh, verse 32, it says, For the pagans run after all these things. Matthew chapter 6, verse 32, pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knoweth that you have need of them. And so the thing that we must really ask ourselves, 
when we inquire, when we seek, when we ask God for certain things or when we go after those things, is it for needs or greed? And so when we look at Luke chapter number 12, verse 15, look at what it says. And he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of things which he possess. So some things can be good or bad depending upon how they are used, how they are used. For example, when we start talking about music, I'm a lover of all genres of music, but you have to be careful as Christians when we start talking about music because music is a gift of God and it can be used productively and, and positivity, with positivity. But Satan can take the same tool and use it for evil. You understand what I'm saying? The internet can be used for good or evil. Understanding that money, things can be used for good or for evil. So let's be aware of how the devil wants to use things and to use those elements that God gave us to enjoy. Because really, when you be analytical about it, money is nothing but a tool to be used, a tool to be used. And so basically, when you understand that, how the devil wants to use those things to harm us, to harm us. Uh, because I've often said one of the ways he harms us is by causing us not to tithe and not to give. Operate within that rank and when God has told us bring the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house prove me now herewith see if I would not open the windows of heaven Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 and pull you out a blessing that you enough to receive and so basically when you start doing anything opposite from that then debt is doing everything but tithing and whenever you find yourself at that place where you allow money to be a possession that you are allowed to possess you instead of you possessing it, then you find yourself at the wrong end of it. And so things can uh, take a toll on, on you. Our heart affections. Verse number 19, lay not up, what he's saying, hoarding a stocking, stocking, stockpiling having uh, a savings or laying up an inheritance, those are actually good things. It's talking about uh, over about overindulgence uh, luxuries and luxuries. Uh, things become the object of life's affections. And so in Jesus' day, wealth was found in three areas. Three areas in Jesus' day. The amount of clothing you possess, or the amount of food you stored up, or the amount of gold you uh, accumulated. So Christ is clearing up the common thinking that if you have a lot of a lot of things, it's because God blesses you. And if you don't, you must not be doing right by Him, or right or the right thing, uh, as it seeks to develop a relationship with God. The same thing is taught in today's prosperity gospel. Name it, claim it, blab it, grab it. Uh, uh, slot machine religion. If, that's what I want to call it tonight. Slot machine religion. Truth is, more people have been ruined by prosperity than ruined by poverty. Get that? The church has always had more success with the poor than with the rich who feel they don't need God. There are some people who have enough substance in terms of uh, money accumulation and things of material sort that they feel they don't need God. Uh, Dr. John Maxwell is one of the world's top Christian experts on money. And uh, back in the day when he pastored in uh, Cali, uh, he had a, a, a man in his church who came to him with a financial problem. And the man said to him, I used to take and make uh, $200 a week. 
and I gave my $20 faithfully, but now I'm making 10 times that, and I have a problem turning loose uh, $200 in tithe. It doesn't seem fair when most don't have to give near that amount. Notice what he says. It doesn't seem fair when most doesn't have to give uh, near that amount. What can I do? And so Mr. Maxwell, Pastor Maxwell pulled him to his knees and said, let's pray about it. And then he prayed, Lord, uh, my brother is having trouble obeying you. His problem started when you began blessing him. So much financially, Lord, I pray you'll bring providential uh, circumstances into his life that will reduce his salary back to where it used to be so he can once again obey you. The man jumped up, it is told, and said, oh no, I can tithe, I can tithe. Things can easily have an impact on our hearts and our affection. Notice that. Sometimes you can get too much. There was a rich young ruler who had too much because he said, all of the laws I've obeyed, all of this I've done. And, uh, but I, all these I've obeyed against uh, all up until my whole childhood. And Jesus says, one thing you lack. Go sell what you have, give to the poor, and then come and follow me. The man's soul was corroded by riches. A lot of times we can allow the things we possess to become kings that possess us. Again, I'm going to tell you again, the things we possess can become kings that possess us. That's good. Now, verse number 19 Verse number 19, things don't last. They are very temporary. And if you are living for things, please know they can be gone in a moment. In a moment. When the stock market crashed, uh, began, beginning the Great Depression, it is said that depression set in and people jumped uh, out of office windows to their deaths it was all they were living for, and suddenly it was gone. Things don't last, and things don't satisfy. I'm going to say that again. Things don't last, and things will not, does not satisfy. Think about it. If money is satisfied, how much does it take? Just a little more? No one preoccupied, and hear me clearly tonight, children, no one preoccupied with money ever feels they have enough. It's a treadmill and an endless cycle. A wealthy farmer had thousands of acres in his country. Someone said, you must set a goal a long time ago to own all of this land in the country. He said, no, I never had that goal all I ever wanted was to have the land that's next to mine. That's all he ever wanted was to have the land that's next to mine. Now notice, now notice now that Jesus doesn't totally reject the desire to accumulate. He redirects the desire. He does not, ladies and gentlemen, uh, he does not reject the desire to accumulate. He redirects the desire. Look at verse number 20. From an earthly realm to a heavenly realm. He redirects it from the earth to heavenly. Just switch banks. Move your accounts from the bank down the street to the bank up in glory. Just switch banks. Tell somebody switch banks. That's the real investment and it's a uh, Burglar proof, rust proof, decay proof, corrupt proof, and that bank is impenetrable. No need for FDIC. No need. And the interest is out of this world. <laughs> Hear me when I tell you, every time you drop your offering, 
uh, in the plate, in the mailbox, in texting. Every time you give your gifts through texting, through uh, online giving, through uh, the mail, uh, through dropping it off here at the ministry, you listen, in, you can whisper to it silently and say, see you soon. Go, grow, and I'll see you soon. Uh, that's what you can do. Because every hour you invest in serving God, you will reap eternity of rewards and an eternity of rewards. You cannot outgive God. I'm going to say that again. You cannot outgive God. And that applies here on earth as well as in eternity. Many of you will give many hours to our church as we begin to set the dynamics to come back into this place. And many of you have labored long and hard to ensure that this is a five-star ministry. And I thank you. But every minute of it, it's a, it's a treasure you're putting in a, a way in a bank up in glory. And so when we look at this nice building that we have to worship in, think about the many folk that gave and worked sacrificially to make all of this happen. A lot of them are gone now, but we're still here reaping the rewards. And now they've joined their, uh, their treasure in heaven. And as they look down and see the souls still being saved, lives still being changed, they realize something about their investment from long ago. It's still drawing interest. And anything you do for God will always, always draw interest. Look at verse 21 as I move swiftly. Jesus said, our treasures affect our hearts. Matthew chapter 19, verse 21 and 22. This young man's problem was not that he had great possessions, but that his possessions had him. Things also take a toll on us, take a toll on our heart. But it takes a toll on our, on our mind, perceptions. When we look at verse 22 and 23 of this same thing, same chapter right here of uh, Matthew 6, when we look at verse 22 and 23, the eye is the window that lets the light in. And so the amount of light that comes in is dependent upon the condition or the health of the eye. It all depends on our vision. What I talked about Sunday, our perception, our perception. And most certainly, let me just tell you, faith makes it better than it looks. Because the question is, are you spiritually minded or are you materially minded? Clear vision means you're spiritually minded. Seeing things uh, in perspective with eternal values in full view, eternal value. And so, but material minded people have blurred vision of what life is truly about. Things uh, are also that take a toll on us, not only our heart, not only our mind, but our wills, our will, our will, our direction, our decision. Verse number 24 talks about mammon, uh, money or riches. Serve means to be a slave. Serve in this particular presentation of verse number 24 means to be a slave. And we all are owned by someone or we are owned by something. And so you may even feel you are very, your, your, your own boss, but you belong to someone or, or something. But you belong to someone somewhere or something. Listen at this. A man walked down the street in Chicago wearing a, a, a sandwich board. You know, he had a board in front and a board in back, which read in the front, I'm a fool for Christ. People walked behind him and laughed. And when they looked back, it read, whose fool are you? He said, I'm a fool for Christ. But then on the backside, when they looked after they laughed, said, whose fool are you? We all serve someone or something, and it's a matter of our will. God designed and created us to be servers. We serve 
We, we are really worshipers. And so either we worship God or we worship stuff. And so uh, you got to make sure you don't worship stuff. One other story I heard that there was a farmer who had two calves and one uh, solid and one spotted. His wife uh, told him, he told his wife, he said, I feel like uh, I'm led to raise them and give uh, a profit of one of them to the work of the kingdom, to the work of the Lord. She thought to herself, that was a great idea. She asked, which one? He said, it doesn't matter which one. Just I'm going to sell both of them eventually. And uh, I'm going to give one uh, the profit of one to the Lord and the profit of the other I'm going to keep. And so a few days later, he came in, honey, I got bad news. She said, what is it? She, he said, the Lord's calf died. <laughs> Do you get what I'm trying to tell you? When time get tough, the Lord is the first one that's tossed out of the mix. <laughs> we got to be careful about that because it's a conscious decision of the will. And it is the major impact upon the direction that our lives take. Remember Lot? He and his uncle Abraham began to accumulate so much wealth. And one day the herdsmen got into a scuffle with each other. And Abraham suggested that they split up and Lot chose the well-watered plains of Sodom and Gomorrah. You remember the story? And his mistake was, he said, that's a good place to raise cattle. But he never thought about whether it was a good place to raise his family. God Almighty, do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Look at the whole picture. There's some things that might be good to you, but they're bad for you. And so how many people get a job offer and a promotion, an opportunity, which requires them to move and they jump on it without ever looking into whether that's a good church, a good place, a good neighborhood for their family. Lot moved to Sodom, wealthy, a prince, but he left Sodom nothing but a pauper. Everything he lived for was destroyed and gone in an instant. We can fall in love with things, watch this ladies and gentlemen, and give them our heart. They will take their toll on our minds, our perception, and they will steer our lives in the wrong direction. You can store treasure in heaven if heaven is where you're going. But let, let me just say this to you. You cannot store treasure in heaven if heaven is not your final destination. I just really wanted to give you tonight a question. Who owns you? Who owns you? Give you some medicine for your mind and a little strategy for your soul. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm done. This is the end of this particular segment of A Moment in the Word. But make sure you ask yourself the question, who owns you? Where are you making your investments? Are you investing? in heavenly things or are you investing in the temporal things of the earth god bless you tonight go in peace i love you very much and i appreciate you more than i can express mm -hmm.